Today I wanted to, to paint a broccoli and I'm sharing my screen and you can see the picture of the broccoli here. And every once in a while I'll look over because I'll see if there's any comments. Um, uh, we're going to do a broccoli. So I have another picture to go by. Um, this is really what I intended to do. You can paint whatever you feel like. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like broccoli. <laughs> uh, I definitely like steamed broccoli or broccoli that's, um, um, what do you call it, baked, like a baked broccoli with a little drizzle of um, olive oil. Uh, I've got a pencil, a little sharpener here just to have your sharp pencil. You may uh, not want to draw real hard on your paper because you may make something that you want to keep, but I'm just going to do a light sketch and I'm going to have to do it kind of hard so you can see it. Very simple. I'm just looking at the outside. I'm looking at the picture and I'm going back and forth and drawing down and I don't have to finish it. There is what I see is a little kind of a bulb here and a little bulb here and this is kind of a separate and there's an, another little mound there you don't have to put all this detail in i'm really doing this just for you for our first one this this year uh but it, it just kind of helps to think about it in little bulbs and then what you're going to think about i don't know if you remember when we did the apple but we did a um i'm going to draw a circle here around globe and we're going to have our sun coming from under here so if it's going to come from under here this is going to be dark and this is going to be light so the light source is coming from down here a lot of times i'll have you draw that arrow onto your your page if you're liking this give me a thumbs up so i know you're here i appreciate it here's my um brush probably using a an eight but my favorite is a six and I even have a three here so we're just going to do a nice loose big broccoli today so I'm going to um, pick our colors we're going to use a sap green so we'll just put it down here on the bottom sap green and if you take a minute to write it that would be great sap green and when you're painting in dimension, I'm putting it in the dirty water, then I'm going to put it in the clean water and then tap the water out. When you're painting in dimensions, you're going to need three levels of uh, value. So I've got a sap green. And then I have a middle green. Which is my. I think it's a um, hunter green. Now, what I really don't want to do is get caught up on all the colors here. I want you to just have fun. Pick the colors you have. It's not that important if you're using the same colors or not. It's just not that important. You just need a light, a medium, and a dark. So for the dark green, you'll probably have something called emer emerald green. And I'm going to put that on there. That's a little darker green. To me, it's it's a, I'm looking at it on my paper, and it's definitely a, a what we would call an emerald green. But I feel like I want a little more. Uh, I'm going to add a, another blue to it. I'm going to add like a, I don't know, a phthalo blue. Just tap that in there. Yeah, a little more blue or green. And then if you find, so I'm going to write down. Emerald green. And then I'm going to do plus blue. And to me, it's still a little bit, when I'm looking at the picture, I see a little bit of a, um, not quite this emerald green as a green. So there are darker spots in there. So I want to just dull this down a little bit. So the color I'm going to do is I'm going to go across the color wheel and I'm going to add a little bit of red. And if I add too much red, I probably won't be very happy. So um, 
I'm just going to add a little bit at a time and I'm adding it into here as my palette. You see, there's a little puddle there. So I'm just going to add it in there and just start with just a little bit on the corner here and see how that's looking. If I'm liking that color, uh, dirty water, clean water. <laughs> I'm getting a little serious because I'm nervous to see how this is working out. And I, I see there's five people here, but I can't really see who you are. So give me a thumbs up, say hello. Um, I'm going to add some red in there. I hope you grabbed your paints and you're able to start with me. There we go. It's a little more, um, a little muted, and that's more what I'm looking for. So have fun. All you need are your paints, your dirty water, clean water, a couple brushes, a pencil, and a sharpener. I like to use this pencil back. You can find it on my website if you want one. Um, it's for your brushes. I like it because then my brushes aren't rolling all over the table. Okay, so we're going to start. Again, if you don't have the same colors, don't worry about it. Just have fun. We're going to start with the lightest color that we had, and that was this, this sap green. And it's going to be my underlying first layer. So I'm going to cover the whole thing with the sap green because sometimes in watercolor you like, and you can see the consistency here. It's a milky consistency. It's not too watery and it's not too pasty. So it's right in between. And the reason for that is because we want it to be able to dry fast enough. Um, if you have a hair dryer, you can use your hair dryer. I don't care for the hair dryer. I don't like what it does, the reaction that the paint gets with the hair dryer, but you're welcome to try it and see if you notice a difference. I'm challenging you to try with the hair dryer. See if you dry it and then try one dry and then one without. A lot of times when we're painting, I encourage you to um, to have two paintings going so that one is can be drying while you're painting on the other one. Uh, you can see I'm stalling a little bit because I want this ground level, this uh, under painting to dry a little bit. This is fun. This is a broccoli. It's going to be lighthearted. It doesn't need to be too dry, but you'll notice that if you feel the thickness of your paper, let's feel underneath. If it's cold, that means it's still wet. That's okay. I want it to still be wet, but you'll notice that it's not real wet and like you can lift it and it's not going to spill all over. So that's about the consistency you want. All right. Now I'm going to go into my next color that I chose the next this middle color. So light, middle, and then dark. And I'm going to try to start defining the um, florets, I think they are. <laughs> Anybody knows, write in the comment for me. Uh, I'm going to just add some, and I'm not going to fill the whole thing because remember our light source is coming from down here. I've got this lit from down low. Okay, so I'm really putting this um, middle color at the top of each floret. This also works really well with trees, like the same technique. You can paint any tree and we'll do trees as we go along. I've got lots of ideas. So for the next Tuesday, it's few Tuesdays of the next few months, it's winter. It's a nice time to be inside and cuddly cozy paint, sit in your own little station here. And uh, I'll be coming on live two o'clock just with a little watercolor activity. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of let that settle. And I hope if you um, didn't draw yours, you won't be have the pencil lines showing through. It won't be frustrating for you. Um, now I'm gonna go with that dark. And then I'll, it'll be a little seesaw because what I'll do is I'll come back with the light and play and um, yeah, I'll just have some fun coming back and forth. Okay, so here's my dark, dark, dark. So I noticed like right in between, still a little wet, that's probably not, um, this is a milky consistency, but I'm gonna add a little more, make it a little creamier because it, what it will do is it'll blend in really nicely and it won't sit strong on there because it because it's creamy it'll sit a little bit but it'll still blend with the other color i'm just laying in all the parts that i want really dark and i notice in between the florets it's dark and on the top edge of that i'm 
Okay, here we go. And I noticed that like right under here, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but right under here, there's like a dark, a dark section. It's not real dark, but just a little bit dark. And then just have some fun. Okay, this is our little floret. Uh, I'm going to add some water to this because I'd like to soften that up a little bit. So I've just put, cleaned my brush off, tapped, dipped in the water, tapped again because I didn't want it too soupy, but just a little water on my brush and I'm just tapping. I'm going to tap. And so now what I'm doing is just blending the whole floret out a little bit. Again, we do the underpainting with the lightest color because in watercolor, if you start out with a heavy color, it's really hard to make it light again. So you want to save your light spots. And then just take a look at it and see where it might need a little TLC, might need a little more definition. I want to soften this up. Just having fun. It's a broccoli floret. It's it's not too, don't take it too seriously. Just have some fun. Um, yeah. There we go. So I'm going to now grab even more darker and rub it in here so that it's still pasty pasty and maybe put a couple dabs where that water uh, had washed in a little. I'm going to try to get up under these florets to get some more detail. The way you uh, get detail in your painting is if you add the veil value. And that's what we're doing. We're adding value. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you guys could join me today. I'm going to call this the broccoli and it's going to be called value. Value scale. The way you make your painting look three dimensional and not flat is by adding some value and add value scale. I notice on the um, picture, I see some more little wedges here. So I'm just going to add a couple of wedges. The fun part about this is have your, you could have a real, real broccoli right there, or you could have this picture and have it side by side so that you can um, compare your painting to the picture. Um, what I also notice is every time I look up and then look back at my picture, I see much more detail. So it is good to just take your time and look closely at the paintings and look at closely at your picture excuse me and then look for detail look where you see an extra little floret in here or I like leaving the light parts but if the light parts are too standoffish to you you can take your paint and just take your light paint and go ahead and do some tapping to get some dimension in that light part but notice I don't have a lot of I'm just tapping like this just tapping. I don't have a lot of water on my brush when I'm tapping because I don't want to lose that. Okay. I mean, here's simple fun. Um, it's not even probably took me too long to get started today, but anybody have anything they want to say or add or love to love to hear from you. Um, these are just pictures I got on the website. Again, see, I'm already looking and I can see some, but okay. So Paint your broccoli if you could post it in this link um, underneath where in the comment section, you just have to go to the comment section and you can post your picture for me. And if you have ideas of things you want me to paint in the next few every Tuesday, uh, I'm happy to take them. So it was happy to see you. Thanks for being here. And I hope you enjoyed this. See you next Tuesday.